So insertion sort is by far my favorite sorting algorithm. It's a weird thing to say, I know, but it's a super uh, useful sort, and it does it has a property called it's an uh, the fact that it's an online algorithm that no other sorting algorithm that we're going to discuss here has, meaning that I can give it just some of the data and it will be able to go forward. So with an insertion sort, it's kind of like making a bridge hand, right? It's kind of the comparison. Basically where you, or a poker hand, where basically you'll draw a card from a deck and you'll insert it into the appropriate place in your hand, in your hand right? And then you'll draw another card and you'll insert that into the appropriate place. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this works. The first thing we needed, so the way this uh, insertion sort works, and as you saw with the other algorithms, we were kind of building a sorted section of the algorithm and an unsorted section of the algorithm, right? Um, and the way that insertion sort works is that we have to, um, the way insertion sort will work is that we are going to explicitly use there's a sec sorted section and an unsorted section of the algorithm. So in the last um, two algorithms, with bubble sort and selection sort, we got the last item for free. In insertion sort, we're going to get the first item for free. What we're going to do is we're going to split the uh, this list into the sorted section over here, right? One item all by itself, it's sorted, ta-da. And the unsorted section, right? All these items are not sorted, right? Okay, so what we do then is that we go ahead and we insert each item. Um, we kind of push down each item into the sorted section as it needs to go. So we're going to go look at this item, and we're going to move it over here. And do we have to swap this item to make it sorted in to make them sorted? Do we have to swap these guys to make them sorted? No, we do not. So we're going to move on to here. So now we're going to insert this guy into the sorted section. Do we have to swap? It? Do we have to do any changes to make this sorted? Well, we can only really compare two items to make it easy for ourselves. So these two guys need to be swapped, right? And then we need to swap these two guys. So it's kind of like bubble sort, kind of like a reverse bubble sort going on here, right? So we kind of push, but uh, we kind of looked for, uh, looked and pushed it down. All right, let's go on to the next item. Do we need to make it? Um, is this item bigger than this? Yes, it is, so we can stop. This is bigger, so we can stop here. What about this item? Well, this item is smaller than that, so we got to swap. Ooh, so we can just stop here because this item is bigger than that, so that means we're sort of, that's bigger than all the items over here, so we can stop. All right, and then this last item is bigger than, is bigger than this, so we can stop. Notice that there were very few swaps that, uh, that happened there very very few swaps that happened very few comparisons so insertion sort worst case scenario is o of n squared average case scenario is o of n squared but it's best case scenario is o of n and it happens to be you know if you time it out it happens to be a lot more efficient that uh, about doing its job with very small data, data sets let's go ahead and see another uh, scenario where i did not rig the results okay um all right over here so we, uh, we divide it into the sorted section and the unsorted section, right? So over here, we want to push this item in. This Is this item smaller than this? Yes, it is. So we swap. And now this item's at the head, so we're done, right? What about this guy? Is this item smaller than uh, than this? No, it is not. So, oh, sorry. Uh, no, it is not. It's bigger, so we're done. Is this item smaller than this? Yes, it is. So we swap. Is it smaller than this? No, it's not. So we're done. Okay, this item. Is it smaller than this? No, it's not, so we're done. What about this item? Well, this item smaller than this one, so we swap. Is this item smaller than this one? Yes, we swap. Is this item smaller than this one? Yes, we swap. Okay, and now for our final item, this item is smaller than this, so we swap. 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 Smaller than this, we swap again, and then we swap one more time. So we're smaller than all those items, so notice that we had to do a lot of swaps there at the end. But for a lot of the items in early, we kind of got them free. A lot of items we actually like just don't, we just kind of skip over them because they happen to be the biggest item we saw so far. Insertion sort is really, really efficient because of this kind of factor that we get. Um, but what I really like about it is that it is what we call an online algorithm, meaning basically saying that suppose these are the only items that we have to swap. 
right? Um, suppose these are the only items we get, right? And we're told that we have to do insertion sort, okay? So this is the sorted section, this is the unsorted section, right? We insert this in, that's fine. We insert this in, that's fine. Oh, good, we're at the last time, we're almost done. Hey, oh wait, what are these over here? These are all the items I forgot to bring in here uh, to, um, to do my, these are all the additional items that we need to do our sorting on. So you're not done yet. But that's, now in other sorting algorithms, you know, have, getting some new data to sort, that means that, guess what? You've got a lot more work to do in the sense that you have to start over. But with insertion sort, you don't have to start over. You can just keep chugging along, right? No problem there, right? Doesn't matter what data you've got, it's perfectly fine. Push down, push down, boom, push down, boom. Of the algorithms that, of the bunch, of the past algorithms that we just went over, insertion sort is probably the most important and the one that will probably mention the most on the exam, that will probably end up being on your exam if any of the O of n squared algorithms end up being on your final exam. So, best case scenario again, by the way, if we pass in a sorted list, okay, sorted section, push it into the sorted section, put this into the sorted section, and so on and so forth. They all just simply just slide into the sorted section with a single check, right? No swaps required, so we're done. Or even better, if like, uh, this is really where it shines, where basically something has been just partially sorted, right? Here's our sorted section, sorted section, unsorted section, push this down in, okay? Next item, push this in, push this in, and then it's just a matter of just checking that these items are in fact in order in comparison to the rest, and boom, no problem there. It's very efficient also when these small, you know, so insertion sort is great for these small data sets. They don't take up any extra memory, unlike the uh, recursion algorithms that will merge sort, which takes up a lot of extra space, or recursion, which has to do that whole, you know, extra space due to recursion, or heap sort, which yeah, it doesn't actually take up too much extra memory at all. So that's no problem with that one. But... Insertion sort's really good for these small for small data sets and really is efficient. So keep that in mind.